So we're going to talk about graphing logarithmic functions. But to do that, uh, where do we get to a logarithmic function? We're just going to define what it is and why we need it. So starting off here, we've got our graph of 2 to the x. So it goes through 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, of course. You're familiar with that. And when it goes back here, we get 2 to the minus 1, which is a half. And then it halves off. So you've got your b. Uh, here, a is 1, b is 2, isn't it? So as you go along, we're multiplying by 2. As we come back, we're dividing by 2. So find the equation of the, what's the inverse function of this. And this is actually where logarithms is going to come out. So remember this trick. We say y equals 2 to the power of x is our original function. And to get the inverse, we switch x and y. So x and y, we're going to swap. So we get x equals 2 to the y. Now, how do I get y as the, uh, the subject of this equation? How do I isolate y? We're going to use logarithms. OK, so remember log. It's log something, base something, equals something. And we're just going to convert this equation into log form. So in other words, 2 to the power of y equals x. Remember last time we figured that is 2 to the power of y equals x. We write it like that. OK, so whenever you see a log equation, this to the power of this equals this. And if I just write that the other way around, y equals log x base 2. And that is our inverse function. Remember, we then write f minus 1x equals log x base 2. OK, so that's what uh, a log function is, right? It's the inverse of an exponential function. Does that make sense? So log x base 2 and 2 to the power of x are inverses of each other. We're now going to try and graph that, OK? So that's part A. Complete uh, the table and graph the inverse function. So the inverse function is, in fact, log x base 2. I'll write that here. Log x base 2, just squeezing that in. Now to graph this, we'll fill out the table and evaluate these uh, y values for the x values given here. Uh, so let's do the obvious ones first. Why don't we do x equals 4? So if I'm doing x is 4, uh, what is f minus 1, 4 going to be? So f minus 1, 4 is going to be uh, log 4 base 2. OK, remember from the last lesson, what's that equal to? Uh, so you think, OK, 2 to the power of what equals 4? 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. All right, so that is, in fact, 2. Uh, let's do another value here. So here, what would log 2 base 2 be? Log 2 base 2. So you think 2 to the power of what equals 2? That's just going to be 1. Log 1, so f minus 1 of 1 is going to be. So what is log 1 base 2? So you've got to think 2 to the power of what equals 1? 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. So log 1 is always 0. Now let's try these negative ones. What are they going to equal? So let's try negative 1, f minus 1 of negative 1. That will be log of negative 1 base 2. Can we take the log of a negative? We actually can't, but let's think why not. We've got to think 2 to the power of what equals minus 1, and that can never happen, all right? So that's undefined. And you'll find that 0 as well. If you've got a 0 here, it's like 2 to the power of what equals 0. That is also impossible, can't be done. All right, so we've got uh, nothing here, nothing here. What about a half? I just threw this in. So by the way, let's actually graph what we've got so far. We've got the point 4, 2, 4, 2, up there, 2, 1. 2, 1, 1, 0, which is here, 1, 0. Not a straight line. Uh, we'll just get another point to see what's going on here. Is it going to stop? What's it going to do after here? So it's curling down. Let's put in a half. So what is f minus 1 of a half? That is going to be log of 1 half base 2. What's this equal to? So you've got to think 2 to the power of what equals a half? 2 to the power of what equals 1 half? What's that? Well, what's another way we can write a half? A half is 2 to the minus 1. So this must be minus 1. So here's another point. A half, negative 1. A half, which is about there, negative 1. It's going to be down here. OK, so what you find here is it's curving down. And this time, the y-axis is an asymptote. Which kind of makes sense, right? If you've got the original function 2 to the x, where the x-axis is an asymptote, 
if you flip it, which is the inverse, you're going to get the y-axis is an asymptote. So this is going to look like, so it's going to be one, uh, just looking at the x values, one, a half, and it's going to be a quarter here. It's going to go through there. Graphing that. Now we get a graph looking like that, and let's label that. So we've got our original function f of x, our inverse function f minus 1x is going to be log x base 2. And there we go, so that is what a logarithmic function looks like. Okay, remember it's just flipped. Uh, the original has an asymptote, the x-axis, so the log function has an asymptote, the y-axis. And moving on to C and D. C is asking, graph the line y equals x and explain the relationship between f of x and f negative 1x. So real quick, uh, I'll just draw y equals x here, like so, and let's not forget our full labeling, arrows, and y equals x, let's put the equation next to it, y equals x. So we've got three functions here, don't we? y equals 2 to the x, y equals log x base 2, and y equals x. So make sure you label the equation, say which one is which. So obviously one is the reflection of the other about the line y equals x. Okay, they are reflections of each other about the line y equals x. Let's just write that out. And done. So remember we said that if a function and its inverse intersect each other, they always intersect on the line y equals x. But here they never actually intersect, do they? But they still are reflections of each other. And just to put in the boxes here for our notes, Remember we said uh, in one of the earlier lessons that when you do your composite function f minus 1 of f of x, you end up with x. And same with the opposite order. If you do the function and uh, of the output of the inverse function, you also end up with x. Remember we said that a few lessons earlier? They kind of cancel out, remember? An inverse function is an undoing function. If we write these using uh, the exponential and the log, we actually get this. We get log base 2 of 2 to the power of x equaling x. Okay, so if you do 2 to the power of x and you take the log of that result, you end up back where you started. And similarly in the opposite direction, can you write that? Give it a try before I do it. And that would be 2 to the power of log x base 2 in the opposite order. That is also equal to x. So whenever you see that, it's kind of like the log 2 and the 2 to the power of cancel each other out. All right, uh, so these are very handy. Uh, you could switch the two with other numbers and make it more general. It could be a five or a three or whatever. Okay, and then just to finish off, let's talk about the domain and range, not of the exponential function, but the log function this time. What's the domain? Looking at the blue one here. So see, it doesn't exist here, the blue one. It exists from x equals zero after x equals zero. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to 0, uh, but be careful, it never actually touches x equals 0, it never touches the y-axis, so it's only x is greater than 0. Okay, that's our domain there. And our range, vertically, it's uh, the blue curve, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it actually keeps going, all real y. Or if you want to be fancy, you could say y is a real number like that. Okay, and an interesting point here, okay? When you've got the original function, 2 to the x, remember that domain was all real x and the range was only y is greater than zero? See how the domain and the range switch for a function and its inverse? Okay, uh, the domain of one function is equal to the range of the inverse, okay? And the range of one function is equal to the domain of its inverse, vice versa, so on and so forth. 